What do you read into what the city minister, Andrew Griffiths, is doing today? And is it enough? I think the truth is this problem has been bubbling away for two or three years. There cannot be an MP in the House of Commons that has not received anguished, pained letters from constituents, especially those that run small businesses who find it now virtually impossible to open account, find themselves often summarily closed, um, find their local branches have been shut, the ATM machines have disappeared. Oh, and if they, if they take cash, the banks don't want to accept the cash. So this problem has been bubbling away for a long time at a variety of levels. And I think what I did to blow the lid off this was to give Andrew Griffith the opportunity to do something that he probably wanted to do anyway. So I, I'm, I'm actually, I have to say, I, it's been extraordinary the extent to which the government have acted, acted quickly, Rishi Sunak, Andrew Griffith, other cabinet ministers. And amazingly, Andrew, as I went through my Sunday newspapers, um, a whole host of left-wing journalists who've said terrible things about the past, who now all agree this is ultimately about freedom. If they can control our money, they can shut us down. It's serious stuff. Nigel, you've lodged a complaint with the informa information commissioner. What does that actually mean? What, what does that mean for banks? What could it mean? So the information commissioner's office actually has astonishing power. They are able to fine companies huge amounts of money if they're seen to have breached anybody's personal data. Why, oh why, did somebody who works for the NatWest Group brief Simon Jack, the BBC's business editor, about the state of my current account and how much money may not or may be in it? That is clearly a massive breach of GDPR, a massive breach of my personal privacy. Uh, of course, I'm sure, Carol, that uh, the fact that uh, Simon Jack, the business editor, had dinner and sat next to Dame Alison Rose, the boss of NatWest, the night before, I'm sure that's entirely coincidental, you know. Yes, of course. <laughs> but, 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 but the ICO has power. It has power to demand documents, to demand records of telephone calls, to demand internal emails. We are going, I promise you, I am going to get the truth of this and I won't be stopped. And also, on Alison Rose, um, yeah. she, she, she put out a, a, what I would call a rather um, weasel-worded apology, Nigel, to you last week. Um, we still don't know what role she had in the construction of that story with the BBC, but the BBC still hasn't apologised properly, in my view. And I still want to know whether, Nigel, you are going to sue Coots Bank, because what they wrote about you in that 36-page document is defamatory. First things first, the BBC, I have actually received this morning an acknowledgement from Tim Davey, the Director General, and he says that Deborah Turness, the CEO of the BBC, will write to me today. So, you know, that is work in progress, I, and I will wait to get Deborah Turness's letter. In terms of getting to the truth, I've also put in a subject access request to Nat West. Hopefully, I can find out there, you know, what was said about me at that higher level within the group. And the point about that 36-page document, Andrew, is I had to publish it. And by the way, it was full of misquotes. It was full of things that have been actually beaten in a libel trial against the former Guardian journalist. I had to put out that vile information about me. I had to make it public because otherwise I couldn't counter the briefing that had been done to the BBC. So, yes, it's yet more reputational damage for me. And on the legal front, all I will say is all options are on the table. Interesting. If Alison Rose is proven to have been implicated in what Simon Rose broadcasts on the BBC, is her position unsustainable as chief executive? Oh, totally. Oh, totally. But, I mean, there are bigger questions here too, Andrew. I mean, I've got to say, every single person watching this right now is a shareholder in the NatWest Group. Right. Of course, yes. We own 39% of this. We bailed these people out after their greed and stupidity, and now they treat us with contempt. And this, I wouldn't have gone public had this just been about me. But I'm learning, as I look at my email box every morning, thousands of businesses and individuals have been closed down all over this country. NatWest appeared to be the worst offender. And worst of all, a final thought, I said last week, if they can do it to me, they can do it to you. Well, read the small print.
of all the four big banks in Britain, they now have the ability to monitor your social media. If you say anything online that goes against the bank's values, they now can close you down. This has got to be fought and fought hard. This is, this is the ultimate battle for freedom and individual liberty.